What's up, everybody? This is Sozo Life. My buddy so Rashawn, What's up, y'all? Sarah, tonight was amazing. Um, so we actually got to go into the juvie tonight, and Sarah got to go taken into the uh, the girls area, and then Rashawn came in and ministered with me to the boys. We had uh, twelve, about twelve, about yeah. twelve, twelve boys um, in there, and man, it was it was awesome. I'll let kind of Rashawn and Sarah tell their sides of the story, but basically, what I will tell you, the I'm gonna tell you the end first. Um, we had literally, I think only two didn't. Yeah, give their life. Right around two, yeah. I, I think around ten two. of the boys gave their life to Jesus tonight, and what yeah. was so funny is halfway through, I, 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 it, while we're preaching, we even made them wait to the very end. But while we're sitting there preaching, they were just like, "Man, I, I want this. I want that. I, I want what, what God's doing." And they, they were really hungry to get it. And so I really just, me and Rashawn were just feeding them and feeding them the desire to really want to lay their lives down. And, and ten of those kids gave their life tonight to the Lord. And then after that, we asked for the Holy Spirit to come in and dwell inside them. And so after the Holy Spirit was descending, man, every one of them got a word from the Lord. And, man, there were some tears and just it was beautiful stuff, man. God was really moving. So I'm just going to let uh, Sarah and Rashawn share what they were doing and what God did tonight. Awesome. All right. Oh, okay, I'll go first. Well, tonight was amazing. I, I started off by running a little bit late. And I, right when I got in there, I just seen how... I just felt the presence of God in there the moment I walked in there and I just see my brother and like we ran up and we, we hugged each other and I just I just thought how beautiful was it just to see kids who were actually being distracted at first to seeing their their hearts just soften before God and as yeah. we explained his word and how awesome the love of God is and we always pointed back to the cross of Christ and it was just amazing just seeing God work in and through each and every one of us and even some of those guys were just asking questions and they were like uh, interacting and wanting to know more and it was just a beautiful thing and we got time to pray over you know a few of the guys one guy had a messed up leg oh yeah and, and, and dude, he, he had a he had a messed up foot had a thing on his oh, foot dude man. and he was like <laughs> uh, it was yeah. such an awesome deal to just see his leg like it was uh what was it uh it was like a cast. Yeah, cast? Like basically yeah. he had kicked a door and it said that he um, he said that he fractured his fractured, bones. Yeah. And so he had this like boot on his foot, man, to walk around. And so I told him, I said, we're going to pray for it and all that pain's going to leave. And you're going to be able to step on it, stand on it, and you're not going to have any have any issues. And what was awesome was he said he felt as we were praying over him and uh, as you were, you know, just letting the Lord speak through you, he just felt this movement going around in his ankle. Then he actually stood up <laughs> and he was like walking around like nothing happened. Like, like in Come praise on. God, and he was like, he was stepping on it, he's stepping on it. Such a beautiful sight, it, it's just amazing. Every time I come up here with Souls of Life and just a, uh, the, the miraculous things God does, we, listen, we're walking out, you know, concluding the night. And uh, <laughs> the police came up with a uh, what was he, a 15 year old boy? 14. 14 year old boy, 14 year old kid in the back seat of this police officer, uh, this wow. police car. He was getting he was getting pulled in to get checked in for the night. And so, yeah. And, 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 and Jason went over there out of the, the bowl. Jason went over there and he starts ministering to this kid uh, <laughs> in the back seat, getting ready to come in here. And it, it was just a beautiful sight. And Revel God revealed a lot of things to me as well. It was amazing. What's, what's funny about that is is the cop just shut up. <laughs> he was just like, talk, man. Go ahead and, go ahead and talk to him. <laughs> so I just got to minister to this kid, man, in the back seat of this car for, you know, three, four, five minutes. And, uh, and, the, and the police officer, in fact, even the, the, the mic, whenever they was, he was uh, driving up and he pushed the button and when they were like they were like hey, uh, who are you and why are you here he was like hold on he told them to hold on <laughs> yeah, <that is laughs> well, but I said no man go ahead and talk to them yeah. and so but anyway it was awesome dude. and uh, Sarah is whatever <laughs> so, um, I got the girls so like I don't get um, there's not always an opportunity for us to have the girls but I I have been praying all week like Lord you know my heart you know I want the girls so when he said that that there were some that I could talk to, I my spirit just awesome. leaped inside, and I was like, "Yes, Lord, you know." And I was like, "Oh gosh, I've been praying all week about having the girls. I didn't ever ask God what He would want me to say to them if I got them." And awesome. so I just did what He told me to do. So like it, it backs up a little bit to two years ago when the Lord spoke to me, and He told me to get, um, He told me to 
get a sleeve of tattoos and so I did and so when I walked in there the first thing I did was take my jacket off and it immediately started conversation they immediately they want to know about my tattoos and what they represent and stuff like that well the tattoos that I have they represent my testimony so I was able to begin with my testimony and during me sharing um, my past with them they they um, <clears throat> they heard me say um, because I had said something along the lines of God told me da 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 and they were like how do you know God told you that like what does his voice sound like to you and that was an open door for me to get begin to share with them God's voice and what it sounds like and how you can recognize um, when he's speaking to you and um, I had clarified they all had given their life to Jesus they were all saved through the chaplain here each one of them had met with the chaplain and gave their life to Jesus so they knew him um, and so what I did was I had there was three girls I had three girls I had two of them look at each other and the first animal that came to their mind tell the other person what animal it was and characteristics that they already know about this animal that can relate to this other person and so this one girl looked at the other girl and she was like I see a, um, a zebra and she was like I just think zebras are so beautiful and that they're just very unique and no two zebras have the same stripes and, mm. and things like that well this girl just starts crying because wow. nobody had told her that she was beautiful hey, there's there's the police officer right now pulling out Wow. See, that's him pulling out right now. Man. And so anyways, they, they shared back and forth what they felt like they were hearing. And so I was able to tell them that, you know, they're still fluttering thoughts. The thoughts that they think that aren't theirs. And they know that they're not theirs, but they don't know, like, why I'm thinking that. that that's usually the voice of God. And then he speaks through pictures and dreams and mm. things around us. So I really encourage them to pay attention to God's voice over the next couple of days. I hope to get them on Thursday. And I ask them to do, like, um... <clears throat> We're, we're, we're making, we always document like the stuff we do. I just want to pray with you too real quick, man, for your own, like, um, for your own, um, just safety and just everything you do, man, especially working right. with these kids. You know what right. I'm saying? Because you know that these kids need love. So, man, I just, uh, what was your name? Your, your, uh, Officer Cook. Cook. Yeah. God bless yeah. you. Father God, we ask that our Officer Cook to be safe, Father God, in his travels, Lord. We ask God that also the Holy Spirit fill him in his yes, heart, Jesus. that he gives him the words to speak, not only to uh, the serves father god but also every person that he comes in contact with lord we ask for divine protection around him and his family um, and we just want to thank you god for him and his service in the name yes, of jesus amen amen, amen. Thanks, amen. Thanks, god bless, you, god. God bless you so much thank you for all you do god bless yes, you. thank you, you bye take care how are we going to take and so um, I just really encourage them to be attentive to the Lord's voice and what he's saying to them. And I asked them if they have pen, they said they have rubber pencils and that they can write. And I said, when you wake up in the morning, dedicate your day to the Lord and, and thank him that you're alive and that you're safety and ask him anything he wants to say about you for that day and to write it down because I hope to get them on Thursday and they're going to share it with me and so and there was another girl that's in solitary confinement that I was able to talk to and she said she she yelled for me to come over to the door and talk to her and I was like what's going on and she was like she said I haven't felt the Holy Spirit since I was 13 years old and when you walked in the room and I saw you she said I felt that same feeling that I used to feel in my mm, grandma's church God. come on and I was come like, on. oh my God Gosh, that's Holy Spirit like he wants you to know that he loves you and that he's chasing yeah. after you and I really made it a point I talked about adoption and sonship and how we're actually daughters through sonship and I mm. talked about how much God loves them and how much they can depend on him as a good father amen. you know and that he's not mad at them and just stuff like that it was really good amen amen Jesus 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 Make much of Jesus you guys are awesome yes. and we love you. love you God is amazing and so uh Listen, lives are getting changed every single day, and, and, and it's up to you. You? Where's the... There oh, you there go. You, is. right there. <laughs> you. Double you. <laughs> it's up to you yeah. to do it. And so uh, change change the world by the light that you shine, and, and yes. literally just go love on people. Um, tonight, they, we talked about, they saw my shirt, and it says, your life don't matter, if you guys can kind of see that. It says your life don't, don't matter. matter and so all these kids were like what what I'm looking at your shirt man why is why you got that shirt and and I told them I was like what do you what do you think I want to be here do you think I want to be here you know like <laughs> what, what, you're like no man you probably want to be home with your family and I said exactly. I said yeah I said I'd rather be home with my family I got kids I'd, I'd rather be hanging out doing something else but I said I laid my life down my life don't matter don't and matter. so I gave my life so here to serve you Praise and so God. they got to understand that a life lived for oneself is worthless but a life laid down for others has value 
you. And so that's what Christ did. For, there is no greater love than a man who lays his life down for his friends. And that's what Jesus did for us. And so that's what we're here to do for the world. And God bless you guys. We love you. God and, bless uh, you all. We love you Jesus all. Jesus is amazing.